Aries, Ashe, Obatula, Ashe, Nila Hotel, Ashe, Anu, Ashe, Pata, Ashe, Apollo, Ashe, Da, Ashe, Zaka, Ashe, Shango, Ashe, Makali, Ashe. Expose uh, some of the information to you about the problems related to the uh, reproductive system of the female. Uh, at times it can be rather complicated, but it's basically very simple to keep the system healthy. And that's to keep the waste out and keep the impurities coming in. But if you're taking it waste in, then the waste comes out and an orifice or outlet for waste in the female system is the uterus. A lot of waste comes out through it and it irritates the uterus, irritates the fiber, irritates the tissue around it, the tissue in it, the muscular structure in it, and this irritation causes inflammation, it causes uh, pain, it causes uh, the infertility. So uh, we have to look at that and see ways to prevent the loss of the uterus and the attack on the wound, which is basically a carrying amongst African women and women in general. It's basically an attack on their reproductive system, a uh, form of population control, the same as with the prostate and the uterus. It's just a way of controlling the population that may be viewed as somewhat fertile. Now, this is what we commonly hear about. We hear about a total hysterectomy. And hyster is referring to the old name for uterus. When a lady's uterus was not in cycle, it was out of orbit, they call it hysterical, because it was out of its orbit. And that's where you get the term hysterical from. A total hysterectomy, the uterus, this is the uterus, is removed, the cervix, the opening of the uterus is removed together, and they cut these supporting ligaments off. These are the muscles that hold the uterus in place. They are severed too. And the only thing that's left at the total hysterectomy is the fallopian tube here, with the fimbriated fibers here, what you call the hand and the ovaries. That's all that's left. And it usually doesn't solve any problems whatsoever to remove the uterus. Because they find that the ladies still have the same problems that they had before the uterus was removed. It's basically a hormonal imbalance. So balancing the hormones may change the problem. But if that doesn't work, with the, with the female system, the pain is usually distributed away from the organ together. It's distributed in what we call the peripheral. So a lady with problems in her uterus would have problem pain in her pelvic area, pain just below her navel, which is where yeah, the, the uterus is basically three fingers below the navel, and then you get into the uterus. I don't want to get all technical here, but they have pains in a circular form. They have pain in the back. The pain is being referred, as we call it. The pain, the symptoms are more referred more in a lady. They're more uh, expansive, whereas in a man, the pain is usually contracted right in that area. Just like a heart attack in a man, would be a crushing blow to the chest, where a lady would experience heart burn, numbness of the leg. See, her symptoms of pain in the left shoulder, her symptoms would be expansive, away from the system altogether, because of the sensitivity of her organ system, of her body, she picks up the signs and symptoms of the pain way out here. Before they get close to the heart, she picks them up way out here, in what we call a peripheral. Whereas a man doesn't pick them up till they're right at it, because of the nature of the man. It's, a, this, it's what we call the biochemical structure, which you would, in, in certain terms, let me, see, let me go over this first and then I'll show you the difference in the structure. Now, these are common symptoms of, of fiber, of something going on wrong in the fiber of the uterus. Some waste is in there, it's irritating or causing the tissue to die or making uh, inflammation. So these are signs and symptoms of something wrong with the uterus. Depression. Dizziness, fatigue, fluid retention, headaches, insomnia, 
usually the sleep alters first. If someone's having some problems, their sleeping will be changed first. If someone's depressed or worried, they have problems going to sleep. The sleep gets changed first usually. Irritable bladder, that's a symptom. Irritable bowel syndrome. Understand that the uterus is between the bladder and the bowel, so it can tilt forward or tilt back. If it has like a, a fiber or a tumor, it puts extra weight on it. So that weight can be in front and cause the uterus to, to fall forward against the bladder, or the weight can be in the back and cause the uterus to fall back on the, on the bowels, on the rectum. That's a problem. So the lady can have fluid retention, problems urinating because the uterus has extra weight from the waist, the fibers assist causing it to tilt forward. Or she can get constipation, or sometimes she just can't even have a bowel movement because the uterus is tilting back against the rectum. It's not really, and when you're dealing with fibroids or cysts, it's not really the size of it. The Europeans go into the size when it's three inches, this size, that's three inches, or they call it three months or four months of pregnancy. When the, when the fiber is that size, they say, let's take it out. But it's not the size, it's the location. If the location of the cysts and tumors in the position where it shuts the, 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 the opening of the uterus so that the sperm can't get in, then you're having problems. So the location of the cyst tumor is blocking the fallopian tube. So the sperm can't get up to the fallopian tube to fertilize the egg. It's the location of the cyst tumor more so than the size. But the Europeans go with size, and they use it to, to kind of force the ladies to have uh, hysterectomies. So you have the irritable bowel syndrome, the muscular jerking. Remember, it's trapped in the fibers, and the fibers trying to contract and expand. And when they're doing that, it doesn't have that fluid flow that it normally has when there's no waste in it. So it gets a, a jerking kind of contraction in. That's why you have muscular jerking. And as I said before, the jerking will happen far away from the area, peripheral, before it goes to the area. Which she picks up the symptoms, the jerking action in muscles further away because of the, what we call the chain effect, the domino effect. Poor memory, premenstrual syndrome, which is a collection of diseases that the Europeans call a syndrome. Restless leg syndrome, that's the nervous system. You find it a lot in children that have hyperactivity. Their nervous system is irritated or damaged or some kind of way chemically compromised so they can't carry a full message, nerve load. So the nervous system can't carry a full nerve load so you get this restless leg syndrome, crossing the leg, always wiggling the leg, all the things that you see where someone has restless leg syndrome. You'll see a lot of uh, men and women, they cross their leg and they just seem to wiggle their foot endlessly. <laughs> I'm looking at a disease and you're looking at the, you know, sociability here. Tingling sensation, that's because the nerves are irritated, you see, and it's not able to carry a full message. So when the nerve's trying to be get what we call a MO, which is a conduct frequency, where you have an ohm, which is resistance of frequency. I don't get too technical here. You get this kind of action here because it can't carry the, the flow. So it jerks because the waste is in the nervous system. So those are some of the signs and symptoms of a uterus problems. As you can see, the areas that we mentioned before, the legs, the pelvic girdle, high up in the shoulder. Why is that there? That is related to the large and small intestines. We're down in this part of the body. That's understanding how the body originated. And as I mentioned, these twos are related. The two kidneys, the two glands are related to the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, the complementary pairs as we call it. Now then all this kind of understanding was uh, given to us long ago in ancient books that are three, four thousand years old. It's not very difficult. It was written in ancient books. One is the uh, Ibris Papyrus, which has the writings of Imhotep in it mostly. It was called Aesculapius by the Greeks. And in the Hippocratic Oath, uh, they say, I swear by Apollo the physician and Aesculapius and health and all heal. Aesculapius is the man, a black man, that all Europeans must give praises to and swear to before they can become a doctor. 
But he, he's responsible for a compendium, uh, which is a collection of medical books written by many different doctors, some are female, some are male. And that's uh, in his book uh, called the Ibers Papyrus. And we had the Edwin Smith Papyrus, which means textbook. Because the Europeans don't call their books trees because they're made from trees. So we shouldn't call our books papyrus because it's made from papyrus. They are books, they are textbooks. The Edwin Smith textbook and the Cahoon medical textbook, named after the Europeans who stole them. And in the Edwin Smith papyrus so textbook, we have uh, surgical procedures explained, and then we have the actual evidence of successful brain surgery. Uh, healing of wounds, of skull injury, successful operation, and the evidence of it, right here, on these 2,000-year-old and 3,000-year-old skulls of mummies. When you're dealing with this system, the female reproductive system, whatever we try to do, we have to trigger the melanin. Without the melanin's participation in the healing process, there is no process. So with all remedies, uh, we have to use some herb to stimulate the melanin production. That's automatically included in any remedy that an African person takes. So we would use a ginkgo, a gota cola. These are two different herbs. Some use a rosemary to help stimulate the melanin production. In children, I use St. John's wort, particularly if they have hyperactive or some kind of letter disease, LDD or whatever. I use a St. John's wort to help increase the blood flow to the pineal gland and trigger the melanin and get it involved in the healing process so the healing will hold. This is what is anatomically referred to as the third eye, or eye of Haru. This centers above the pineal gland. It floats in the third ventricle. These little bubbles here you see are brain cells. They're blown up about the size of a car. And this is the anatomical third eye. It looks like the galaxy, but it is not. It's interesting it has an orbit it has particles in it that move and every time something a star or planet moves one of these particles in this moves i don't know which moves first i don't i'm not all of that grounded in the science of understanding that but it's a transducer of the cosmic or galaxy now to treat any illness, be it uh, ovarian cysts or fibroid tumors or prostate-related diseases, we have to understand that we ha are treating a whole system. We're treating a system that's interrelated, very easily interrelated. Now, we can go from the uh, third eye, which some people call the pineal gland, Or we can go from the crown or any of the uh, organ sections here. We have the third eye, the crown, the throat chakra, or melanin center, or melanin cluster, which the Hindus call chakras. We have the throat chakra, the heart, the solar plex. We have the genital and the perineum area. And each one of these areas are related to a gland. We have the pineal gland, pituitary, thyroid, thymus, adrenal gland, and liver, which is a gland, and the ovaries and testicles, which functions as a gland, and the uterus functions as a gland and a muscle, as well as the prostate, which is a combination of a gland and a muscle. And each gland produces a particular color, as you can see on this chart, and each gland vibrates to a particular note and to a particular number and letter. Each gland produces a particular taste. A problem with sugar will be a problem with the pancreas, because the pancreas produces sweet. A problem with sal was related to the liver. A person eating a lot of sal, sweet and sal, is obviously having some liver problems and pancreas problems. Or someone has a taste and always likes something sal, I always like something bitter or pungent. Someone likes something pungent all the time. Is with pungent foods are like garlic, onions, ginger, that's pungent. So that points to the organ that is involved. Pungent taste is associated with the large intestines and lungs. 
salty taste is associated with the kidneys and sex organs. Now, how did this occur? It's because the system works on what we call a negative drive, or, that's, or as Africans would call it, a male and female principle. But in European science, the negative drive is, is of course, the woman. Uh, they associate a lot of negative things with women in European science. So women created the original sin, and that goes on and on with all that uh, negative things there. But we can treat the organs with colors, or we can identify the plant that's good for the organs by color. So you say, uh, oh, let me see, uh, uh, the liver. The liver is associated with yellows. Sure enough, dandelion is good for the liver. Sure enough, a golden seal has produces oil yellow. It's good for the liver. The colors will lead you to the right herb, even if you don't know the so-called biochemical or nutrient breakdown. And if you're good at tuning forks, tuning forks come in all of these different notes. I have all of these sets of tuning forks, and the plants will vibrate to the note that they hold. Everything in harmony wants to stay and maintain harmony, so it vibrates to frequencies that are harmonic to it. And then we can get to a zodiac breakdown of the organ system. The eyes are Aries, and the uh, music note is D flat, and the color is red, and the zodiac house is one. And we can treat organ systems based on looking in the person's eyes and looking for where the vein is. If the vein is in the house, then that's related to that organ. There are various ways to treat the system. Or you can use the uh, melanin gas or electromagnetic cloud, which they call the aura, so they won't have to use the word melanin. So you won't know what's going on.